Okay, here we are again. Um, two days in one week, that's crazy. So here's what we got going on. Uh, for those uh, e-learners and for the couple people that were absent, let's see, that was uh, Rowan, uh, Aiden had the surgery. Uh, there's one other person, uh, Lily. Uh, you guys, what I would like you, for you three to do uh, is to take your test on Teams. So it's already posted, it's been posted. So if you guys could take uh, your test, um, then we don't have to take the test uh, tomorrow during student advisement. So if you guys go ahead and take the test. Everyone else uh, is going to do a review of the things. Well, I graded your test. You can already see in the grade book as class. We did pretty good. Um, if there's one thing that I was slightly disappointed on was our performance for graphing linear equations. And uh, that's one of the critical skills that we have to do in Algebra 1 is if I give you an equation in the form of y equals mx plus b, that you can graph it. Uh, I saw some of the standard mistakes that you typically see for algebra students. You graph the slope backwards. Um, that was a common mistake. But I had a couple, couple students that were really uh, a little bit lost on it. So remember the steps for graphing a linear equation. If the, form is in, uh, if the equation is of the form of y equals mx plus b is step number one. You graph the y-intercept. That's the last number, the number that's not attached to b. It's going to be positive or negative. You put it on the y-axis. That's why it's called the y-intercept because um, it's where the line crosses the y-axis. From there, you look at the slope. That's the number attached to x. Uh, it could be positive, could be negative, could be a whole number, could be a fraction, could be an integer, any of those. Uh, remember, we define slope as rise over run. So from the y-intercept, remember that's step one, you graph the, the y-intercept. That's the b value. Uh, from the y-intercept, you apply the slope. Uh, and we did that whole process of where we did three points going in one direction, one point going the other direction. Depending upon your graph, sometimes the graph allows you to put a bunch of points. Sometimes you can only put one point. Sometimes it, you can't even go in the direction you would like to go because the y-intercept is way at the top or way at the bottom. Remember, you just use the reverse slope. So you take the opposite of the rise, the opposite of the run, and you apply that to the point as well, too. Uh, as a final check, you look at the equation. Uh, and you look at the slope. Remember, slope, if it's positive, rises as you go from left to right. If the slope is negative, it falls as you go from left to right. I didn't have any anyone counting squares uh, inaccurately, so sometimes you see that mistake. But yeah, I had a, had a number of more people than I would like uh, missed uh, those questions on the test. Actually, and it was probably because I put such a big emphasis on it, uh, people did really good on graphing the horizontal and vertical lines. Um, so I just threw a couple of them on this worksheet, uh, but you guys did really well. And generally speaking, that's where kids typically forget. Go figure. I put a bunch of emphasis on it this year, and you guys did very well on it. Uh, I guess I probably should have put more emphasis on the normal ones uh, uh, and, and not the, the horizontal. But it is what it is. Uh, so go ahead and check your grades. Remember the, those three people that hadn't taken their test, please take your test uh, today so that uh, we can move on tomorrow to the new chapter and, and uh, just remember what I said for everyone you need your graphing calculator for this entire chapter so it's really the next two or three chapters that we'll be using the uh, graphing calculator. this one is the most uh, intensive one uh, uh, we'll be using the graphing calculator every day and I will have a uh, calculator portion on the test so uh, if you don't have a graphing calculator you won't be able to take that portion because it's not going to be multiplying numbers together, it's going to be actually reading a graph on your calculator uh, and learning to manipulate it. Okay, uh, I'll be online the entire day, so if you run any problems with this worksheet, I don't think you will. You guys uh, um, have a, a pretty strong grasp of it. I did give you the answers as well, too. Just be careful for the answers. I don't know why this particular program does this, but all the answers, the squares go by two, and on the actual problems that I'm giving you, the squares go by one. If that It should make sense. We've done it before in class. So have a great uh, snow day, uh, eat a cookie for me, and I will see you guys tomorrow.